new movement spreading fast across the country for parents demanding school choice so they have more options when it comes to where their children go to school with their hard-earned taxpayer dollars. Joining us right now, Parents Defending Education's investigative fellow, Alex Nestor. Good Friday morning to you, Alex. Nine huh? states and counting have enacted school choice, including, let's see, Indiana, Montana, and South Carolina just this past May. Of course, this very state to state. So tell us more about, about this and how it does, how it does work in these states. Yeah, so that's just nine states this year. And education, a school choice varies so widely by different states. You've got education savings accounts, voucher programs, and tax credits, sometimes open to all families in a state, sometimes to families who live in districts that are failing, sometimes limited by income. But look, any of these measures just give parents more choice um, and better options for their kids. So what's driving this momentum? And, and why are some states hes hesitant to do the same, do you think? So we know from the pandemic that a lot of parents were not happy with schools closing for months and months on end, sometimes more than a year. And, you know, parents just wanted their kids in physical classrooms. And oftentimes they chose private schools or homeschooling instead. We know that public schools lost about 1.2 million students during the pandemic. And some of that is due to the decline in school aged children. But a lot of that is because parents were looking for other options because schools were closed for months on end or they weren't listening to parents and we see incidents like that too every day that you can find on our website of schools just excluding parents uh, not being able to you know make their voice heard when it comes to what their kid is learning in school I want to ask you uh, about Iowa because on Wednesday universal school choice went into effect there the state received an overwhelming response in fact a thousand applications in just the first 30 minutes will school choice break the traditional public school school monopoly yeah, so I don't think in the short term or medium term that it's going to necessarily break public schools. I mean, there are still roughly 50 million students who attend public schools. Most kids will go to a public school. But what it will do is this. It'll tell schools that, hey, look, when parents want to see their kids in a physical classroom or they want to be involved in their kids' education, if your public school is not providing that, then parents will seek other options. Uh, education, school choice, just gives parents more opportunities, gives kids more opportunities, and it messages uh, that pretty strongly to public schools, too. Yeah, and a lot of parents say, bottom line, children should not be stuck in an underperforming school because of their zip code. But aside from all that, talk about how the pandemic and how school closures really force families to reevaluate their kids' schools. Well, yeah, look, like I said, schools were closed for months on end and a lot of parents sought different options. Uh, you know, school closures were especially bad for families with a child with disabilities. They did not receive the type of care from their public schools that they would have had schools been open. Also, we know that about 1.8 million women left the workforce during the pandemic to take care of kids in large part. So we know that closing schools uh, in, in the traditional public school system failed parents for during the pandemic and you know parents won't won't forget that parents defending education's investigative fellow alex nestor we appreciate you joining us this morning thank you thanks for having me